Good afternoon, everyone. All right, we're in the home stretch. We can dig a little deeper inside and hang in there, you know, mentally and physically. So if you could indulge me to just slide to the edge of your chair and clear your hands. Let your eyes close. And immediately, as soon as your upper eyelid comes down, you'll notice a parasympathetic response or there's, there's a little hit of tryptophan or serotonin that just slows things down. Roll your shoulder blades up, back, and down a couple times and just let go of anything in the upper back or the back of the neck that might be disturbing the peace that's in your heart and your mind. Begin to breathe as slowly as you can through your nostrils and know that each breath is a fresh new moment for you to interact with neurologically and emotionally. Begin to notice the muscles you're using to inhale. The diaphragm and the intercostals, the scalenes. And the muscles you use to exhale. Your abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis, the traverse abdominis, your obliques. And if you're under any type of duress, slow your inhale down to stabilize the mental world. And let your exhale become longer than your inhale so that the fear centers of the brain, the amygdala, the hypothalamus, begin to turn down and they don't draw your energy. The hippocampus and the higher learning centers of the brain alert the body to burn fat. When you get up this morning, you have 30 days of fat stores that the body can utilize as fuel. You have 30 minutes of sugar stores. So letting the exhale become longer than the inhale, you trigger to the brain that you're safe in this environment through your sensory perception. So you're in an inflammation management program right here, lengthening that exhale and slowing the inhale. Try to turn off the analytical mind for the moment, the conceptual mind. And when the next inhale is complete, sit up tall and hold the breath in and contract your abdominal muscles slightly. Just feel the moment first. And then exhale slowly through your nose. If you know how to use the ocean sounding breath from the yoga tradition, Allow that to happen. And then pause at the base of the exhale. Your kidneys will secrete EPO. And there's relaxed energy there on the next inhale. And you're slightly aroused. For those of you who don't know how to do the ocean sounding breath, open your eyes. Bring the right hand up to your face. Exhale through your mouth. And you'll sense a neutral tone coming from the epiglottis at the top of your trachea. Your brain just identified that point. Close your eyes, contract that point, and now when you breathe, notice it takes you longer to inhale and longer to exhale. Your five sense perception introverts before you extrovert into the field of pure potential. On the next inhale, place those feet down on the ground and notice how the brain loves to feel you grounded, rooted, centered. On the next inhale, stand up. Hold the breath in, turn your palms away and open your thymus. Exhale, ocean sound, sit down with control, isometric contraction, Hold the breath out for a moment. Inhale, come back up for a moment. Squeeze your core, palms are up. Exhale, isometric contraction with control. Sit back down. Two more. Hold. If you want to lift your chin, you can. Open your thyroid. Those seven special hormones from the thyroid. Exhale, come on back down. Inhale, up, hold, engage your core, relax your eyes and jaw. Exhale, come down with control. 
feet are on the ground, natural breathing. Bring your chin down to your chest and let the head move right to left slowly, massaging the trachea, the esophagus, the vagus nerve, the thyroid, the bottom of the brain, bringing fresh blood into the brain stem. Try to link the breath with the movement. The brain loves rhythm. When we get jammed up, we lose rhythm. Rhythm is the key to sustainable power. On the next inhale, lift the chin back. Inhale, hold the breath in. Squeeze your core. Take your right thumb, close off the right nostril, expel the waist slowly out the left nasal channel. Inhale, slowly up the left nasal channel. Hold the breath for a moment. Engage your core. Close off the left nostril. Open and exhale slowly out the right. Inhale, slowly up the right. Trace the energy into your left prefrontal cortex. Hold. Close off, release, exhale left. One more. Inhale slowly, left nostril, right prefrontal cortex, spatial intelligence, intuition, going with your gut. Close off, release, exhale right. Inhale right, trace the energy into your left prefrontal cortex. You'll find all sorts of math and science and stuff in there. Hold for a moment. Close off, release, exhale. Take a deep breath in through both nostrils. Hold the breath in for a moment. Another moment. Let the pressure build. Now expel the pressure slowly through your nose. Rest for a moment. It's okay to rest. Life's an endurance event. Life's a race that you want to come in last. You don't want to win that race. And then when you're ready, open your eyes. How's that feel? Because you're great. So let's talk a little bit about the fundamentals, about what's going on behind the scenes of our conscious brain. The autonomic nervous system plays a huge role in regard to our cerebral activity, our neurochemistry, whether we feel self-confident or we feel like we have no confidence, and how we work with our gut our emotional intelligence, our EQ. The right nostril on the inhale feeds your left prefrontal cortex energetically, and there's a slight sympathetic charge to that. There's a little bit of heat and adrenaline that comes to that. The opposite nostril, the left nostril, is parasympathetic. It's based in cooling, chilling hormones. It feeds the right prefrontal cortex, which is things that haven't happened yet in your life. It's the next chapter, and when you're stressed out, when we're in fear states, it's hard for the brain to interact deeply with what the next gift the universe is trying to give you. So this autonomic response is amazing around the breath because the breath is one of the few autonomic functions that if you want to control your breath, you can. If you don't want to control your breath, the autonomic nervous system will do it for you. Your body inhales on its own. You know, if you just sit here and hold the breath out, I guarantee you, the body's going to inhale on its own. So it's an amazing tool that we can use to start to really get centered individually and as a community to really push consciousness. When we think about the science of breath control, let's just make it as simple as we can. The length of your breath, how long it takes you to inhale and how long it takes you to exhale, is going to trigger a neurological act that is going to either lengthen your thoughts or give you short bumpy thoughts. When the breath is short and bumpy on the inhale or exhale, the brain takes a seat back and it begins to become aggressive or defensive. And in that, that bumpy thinking, we begin to lose our grounding rods and we're, we're, we're dancing way too much. So slowing the breath down, taking a rich full inhale, diaphragmatically breathing, the length of the breath is going to dictate the length of the, the interaction of the scalar thoughts that are taking place in your brain at any given moment, which gives you a greater chance to control the flashcards of the photons you're watching in your brain. The pace of your breathing, the slower you breathe, 
the greater cardiovascular health you're going to have, the greater blood pressure you're going to have, more optimal neurochemistry you're going to have, and you're always going to burn fat. You're going to save your precious sugars for your immune system so that you don't get sick and you can reduce inflammation. The depth of the breath, how much do you want to inhale? If I told you you could inhale for minutes, you would say, Ed, nah, I couldn't do it. Practice this. When you're inhaling and inflating these lung tissues fully, you're feeling the moment first before you interact with your mental and neuromuscular skills. So stretching this lung tissue is huge because as we age, after the age of 30, lung tissue begins to degenerate. So practicing the depth of the inhale, the brain will naturally reduce the information further in whatever subject of state you're working with to maybe give you a way of going off a path of a behavior, choice, perception, expectation that's no longer serving you. So you remain completely present. One of the great things about nostril breathing is how it affects the 12 pairs of the cranial nerves. So when you think about it, when you breathe through your mouth, the air just comes in unfiltered, cool, and it goes right into the upper lobes of your lungs, which are imbued with sympathetic nerve endings. Blood pressure goes up, heart rate goes up, thoughts start to fly, digestion starts, viscera goes quiet, and you just start to digest yourself, and all your sugars burn up. So when you think about it, look at how these cranial pairs go back. First, cranial nerve, the nostrils, eyes, ears, coming down into the low jaw. My invitation for you is to keep your eyes and low jaw relaxed as much as you can for the rest of your life. So you're getting as much energy to flow through these cranial nerves. So they're reading the environment, giving you the best opportunity to interact with the creative force of the universe so that you can get out of your own way where you need to and let the universe fulfill the dream that you're ready to do. So the nostrils and the cranial nerves play a huge role in how we set up the moment, how we perceive what's happening. And then obviously the tenth, the vagus nerve, plays a huge role in inflammation reduction, fat metabolism, and stalling aging. When you think about <clears throat> this vagus nerve, it's so long. It starts in the center of the brain, comes down through C5, C6, intervents through the heart and lungs, through the diaphragm, and it has 10 little tentacles that go into all the organs of the abdomen except for your adrenal glands because the adrenal glands aren't designed for relaxation, they're designed for fight or flight. So the more we can amplify the electricity that goes through the vagus nerve and amplify the effects of the diaphragm moving downward, creating great physical posture, it gives us the ability to negotiate with the mind so that we control the thoughts. The thoughts don't control us. Why is that important? Because there's no one on earth harder on you than you. We're not really good judges of ourselves. So settling down and bringing up strong communication and amplifying the vagus nerve is a huge thing that comes from diaphragmatic breathing and using the ocean sounding breath that we did a few moments ago. The diaphragm muscle is the number one muscle that's going to stall aging. When you have a breathing practice, first I invite you to start it passively. Use it at home, on the couch, on a chair, and learn different concepts and strategies of how you're going to make this the strongest muscle out of your 610 muscles. And when you strengthen this muscle, your posture is always erect. And when the spine is erect, you use so much less energy to get through your daily routines. And when you use less energy during your daytime routines, you sleep like a baby at night. If you're exhausted from what goes through the day, there's not enough energy for the brain to feel safe enough to move us into the delta waves where the brain can reorganize itself and give you skill for act skillful action of the next day. So work with this diaphragm muscle. On the inhale, what it does is it presses down. It gives you a vertical press down onto your entric nervous system, your liver gallbladder on the right side of your belly, and your stomach spleen on the left side of your belly. Notice when you breathe through your mouth. Just take a couple breaths through your mouth right now. Notice your diaphragm doesn't move south. It just moves east and west, and your body weight collapses down onto your GI tract. Inflammation begins to form around the gut, and it's difficult to get out as we age. So as you begin to strengthen this diaphragm muscle by breathing through your nose and creating the suction and pressure in the lungs, 
many, many good things happen that stall aging and keeping inflammation markers in the gut very, very low. So your digestive fire is high, but your heart rate and blood pressure are low. We have a second brain that folks are talking about, this microbiome of the gut. So it's fundamentally in your solar plexus. So when you're breathing through your nose and this diaphragm is pressing down approximately 20,000 times every day, you're massaging this entric system. 90% of the neurochemical serotonin, which is so needed in our stress-filled culture for all sorts of different reasons, is gonna come up the spine and help the brain navigate the amazing mental world that you're hosting or hosting right now. The dopamine, 50% of the neurochemistry, is going to come from the gut also. So dopamine, we've heard a lot of different things on it today, but at the end of the day, if you don't feel good about yourself, it's very difficult to sequence wonderful thoughts about yourself. It's almost like a bottom-up type of learning. So feeling good, to me, is the foundation of excellent mental sequencing. When we talk about the dynamics of the breath in the most simplistic way, we are slightly aroused when we inhale. There is a slight spike to the heart rate and blood pressure. On the exhale, it's very cooling. So what I like to do is prepare myself on the inhale for what my intention is. I find that gap between inhale and exhale, and I let the water settle. On the exhale, I manifest what I was attempting to bring the life on the intention. When we think about the mental dynamics of what's taking place in the brain, so much of us are in a reactionary mode. We're not receiving the information fully and processing it before we begin to take skillful action. So when your heart rate and blood pressure are being controlled by your breath, we can kind of prepare ourselves for skillful activity. The main thing is, is get prepared. When you get up in the morning, the first thing I invite folks to do is get grounded in gratitude. You are you. There is no one else on the planet better than you. There was no one else on the planet worse than you. You are you. You are unique. And you have things that you need to get done. So getting grounded early in the day before you get into your full-on beta mind is very, very important. And as you become prepared, Participate fully with the moment, emotionally, physically, spiritually, mentally. And then above all, if you don't manifest it in this breath, be patient with yourself. Don't have a big pity party and shut down the process of neuroplasticity. Just because you don't have something today doesn't mean you won't have it tomorrow. If you can just stay chill with your original intention. So when we think about the emotional dynamics or EQ that, that come from breath, number one, emotion, which could classically be energy in motion. And that's happening down here. All of your energy, predominantly, is down here in your GI tract. And keeping the inflammation down through the digestive process is huge. So you have this energy, which is basically a slave to what your thoughts are or what your level of awareness is. So as we begin the transformational process, and we begin to see that there's things that I need to do in my life before my life ends, your energy or the capacity to do stuff will be a slave to your level of self-awareness. And again, with us being so hard on ourselves, we really have to be skillful in what I call noticing. When I charge this, this happens. When I charge this thought, this happens. Noticing is a huge tool because you're not taking sides. It's almost like you're in the role of a witness. You're just observing this amazing inner landscape that's been gifted to you. So energy is a slave to awareness. You know, when we have the, the body relaxed and we have the pace of the thoughts relaxed, we can go be old, beyond the old model of the HPA access, or fundamentally, when something goes wrong in our life, or we stub our toe, or there isn't a sequence of thoughts that's comfortable for us and we begin to suffer, the first thing we do is we stop breathing. And we, stop dr we start drowning out of water. And this HPA access goes into action 
to either take a life, save a life, or freeze. And this was great thousands of years ago when the majority of the people on the planet weren't educated. But now, education is a right to everyone on the planet. And in that, we need to be aware that thoughts aren't facts. And when we can have a relaxation response in a breath, and when there's stress in our life, we can transcend from this old animal model into a more refined model. All new awarenesses, as we age, come from the hippocampus, and it evolves into new awareness. So the hippocampus can give us more information around the old answers. The pineal gland is going to relax us, create space, and the serotonin is going to keep us calm. And this is a wonderful way for all of us as a species to keep the planet filled with peace rather than war. And it begins internally with each of us. We just did some diaphragmatic breathing. You can breathe diaphragmatically through your nose fast or slow, depending on what your energetic needs are. Breath retentions. You can hold the breath in. You can hold the breath out. You can always hold the breath in twice as long as you can hold it out. Alternate nostril breathing. This is a wonderful way to create flow or to create a way that the brain is always creative, increasing imagination, going beyond fear states. Looking to synchronize the brain is one of the great things that alternate nostril breathing does. The idea is to be awake in your dream. And when we're exhausted, we just fall asleep. But when you can be in these theta brainwave patterns where you're not fully awake and you're not fully asleep, you're like the same way you were when you were one or two or three years old. You're just reading the environment, you're downloading the information, you bring it into your heart, and you have it there for yourself when you need it. You just have to remember that you know how to do this because you've already done it. When we're talking about wellness, one of the things I do with companies that I work for, number one is brain breaks. Every 90 minutes or two hours, we push the computer away. We do some sort of activity. To, if you're a creative person, we get you out of the right prefrontal cortex, we put you in the left. If you're a numbers person, a lot of to-do lists, we get you out of the left prefrontal cortex, we put you in the right, and we cool down that left prefrontal cortex. Brain breaks are great. The less energy you use during the day, the greater sleep you're gonna have at night. One of the things you wanna do is, you wanna learn how to create flow in your life. The old yogis knew about this, and now it's just being proven in, in science that when you can create the five neurotransmitters, the norepinephrine that gives you that laser-like focus so you're not distracted from the part of you that says you can't do it or everybody else is better than me. When you bring up that dopamine, you feel really good about your chances to take down whatever's in front of you and open that door. The anatomine, that bliss molecule that allows both prefrontal cortexes to communicate through your corpus callosum so there's only one voice in your head, not many. Serotonin, obviously you gotta be cool, you gotta cool the fire. And obviously the opiates from the brain, the endorphins, so you can handle higher and higher levels of resistance for you to meet the goals that are gonna satisfy you. The boundaries of the self are false. There's progressions that we all have to go to to achieve our goals, but there is nothing that you cannot achieve. Make a plan, stick to the plan, be persistent, learn how to breathe, there is no such thing as failure, there's only lessons, so stay with it. I'm launching a new book today, Life with Breath, IQ plus EQ equals a new you. It was great to be with you all here today. I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.